Good afternoon. The Secretary General will update you on the second day uh, of the meeting of NATO foreign ministers, and then we'll have time for a few questions. Secretary General. Good afternoon. Uh, we have just finished a substantive uh, meeting of NATO foreign ministers to prepare for the Vilnius summit in uh, July. We welcomed Finland uh, as uh, our newest member, and uh, Minister Havisto took up Finland's uh, seat among uh, NATO allies. Allies also agree that Sweden should become an ally as quickly as possible. We addressed uh, many important topics over the past two years, including how to strengthen our political and practical support for Ukraine. We met yesterday in the NATO-Ukraine Commission with Foreign Minister Koleba. We agree that uh, our continued military support for Ukraine is essential. I welcome the new commitments made by allies and I expect more. <clears throat> we also addressed our longer-term support. Uh, we do not uh, know when uh, this war will end, but when it does, uh, we must ensure that President uh, Putin cannot continue to chip away at uh, European security. So we must enable Ukraine to deter and defend against future aggression. This includes strengthening Ukraine's armed forces and arrangements for Ukraine's security. We agreed uh, to start work uh, on developing a strategic multi-year assistance program for Ukraine, a clear demonstration that our support will continue for a long haul. To increase Ukraine's interoperability with NATO and to bring it up to NATO standards. This will assist Ukraine on its path to Euro-Atlantic integration, because Ukraine's future is in the Euro-Atlantic family. NATO allies are committed to giving Ukraine what it needs to prevail as a sovereign independent nation in Europe and to achieve a just and durable peace. At the same time, we will continue to support our partners facing pressure from Russia, including Moldova, Georgia and Bosnia-Herzegovina. We also discussed the threats and challenges, challenges in the Middle East and North Africa, including instability, terrorism, and the growing activities of Russia and China. We will continue to work closely with our partners, including Mauritania and Tunisia, to help them build up their defense institutions and stabilize their countries. To keep our people safe in a more dangerous world, it is essential that we invest more in our defense. So today, ministers also addressed progress on defence spending. At the Vilnius summit, I expect allies to agree an ambitious a new defence investment pledge with 2% of GDP as a floor, not the ceiling. For our final session, NATO's Asia-Pacific partners, Australia, Japan, New Zealand and the Republic of Korea, joined us together with the European Union. We discussed the global consequences of Russia's war against Ukraine. This war is not only an attack on Ukraine, but on the international rules-based order that preserves peace and stability. If President Putin wins in Ukraine, it will send a dangerous message to authoritarian leaders around the world that they can achieve their goals through brute force. So our support to Ukraine remains critical and it is in our shared security interest. We also discussed China's growing alignment with Russia. China refuses to condemn Russia's aggression, it echoes Russian propaganda, and it props up Russia's economy. China and Russia are also stepping up their joint military activities in the Indo-Pacific region. Allies have been clear that any provision of lethal uh, aid by China to Russia would be a historic mistake with profound implications. At a time when Beijing and Moscow are pushing back against the rules-based international order, it is even more important that we continue to stand together as NATO allies and with like-minded partners. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. We'll start with the BBC in the third row. Uh, 
thank you very much, uh, Secretary General. Can I ask you, you said that you're talking about a new ambitious spending target of 2%, but 2% is already the spending target of NATO. Is there any way at Vilnius you will actually, and you've said before that you know, it's, a, it's a floor, not a ceiling. So I'm, I'm not confident that is a new spending target. If you can explain to me why it is a new spending target, wouldn't it be m more honest to say, you know, a new figure is a new spending target, like say 2.5%, do you think there's a possibility that might happen? And, th and then you clearly issued a warning to China about providing lethal aid to Russia. Is there any evidence among allies that China is doing that? Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> first on 2%, you are right that when uh, NATO leaders met in 2014 uh, in the United Kingdom in Wales, um, uh, we agreed uh, a defense investment pledge uh, where we also use 2% as GDP, as the guideline. Uh, but then we refer to 2% as something we should strive towards, uh, move towards. So it has been interpreted by many allies as something that uh, is more like a, a ceiling, something we should move towards, which is actually the language we use in that uh, statement uh, or in that pledge agreed in 2014. Um, since then, actually, allies have come a long way, because since then, uh, all allies have increased defense spending, and, uh, and, uh, and this is significant because until 2014, uh, uh, the majority of NATO allies across Europe and Canada actually uh, were reducing defense spending every year. So what we managed with the pledge we made in 2014 was to turn the corner, uh, not going down anymore, but actually start to go up. And all allies have increased the defense spending, uh, more allies meet the 2% guideline or are spending uh, or, or are at 2% or above, um, uh, but many allies are still uh, below. Uh, and some of them also then refer to, well, this is uh, something we should strive towards, not, not a kind of requirement. So that's uh, uh, what I'm... Uh, uh, mean that that's, that, that's my message when I, when I speak about the stronger commitment, is to have much stronger language that this is not some kind of ambitious uh, goal in, in the distant future that we should strive towards. It is something that we should be strongly committed to and as a 2% uh, as a minimum, not as, as, as a ceiling. So I actually think it will make a difference if not only I say that 2% should be a minimum, but that all... Uh, 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 allies agree that that 2% should be uh, a minimum uh, a floor. Um, the most important thing of, is, of course, what allies do, and I'm quite encouraged because I also now see that uh, several of those allies who have been not able to reach 2%, uh, like Germany, like the Netherlands and others, Denmark and many others, uh, they, are, they are now very committed uh, to uh, increasing defence spending, and, and, and to reach 2% uh, uh, as of soon. Uh, 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 and that's because uh, the war in Ukraine, uh, which has made it even more obvious that we need to invest more in defense. When it comes to, to China, of course, we are monitoring very closely what China does. Uh, any provision of uh, lethal uh, aid to, uh, to Russia from, uh, from China will be a big mistake will, uh, with profound uh, consequences. Um, uh, so far, we have not been able to confirm any provision of lethal aid, but this is something we, we follow very closely, and we also communicate very clearly that this will be a big mistake. Then, what we do know is that China has not been able to condemn uh, the brutal invasion of Ukraine. Uh, we also know that, um, uh, that China and Russia are uh, coming closer and closer, uh, they signed just weeks before the invasion uh, a partnership agreement where, where they state clearly that the partnership between Russia and China is without any limits, a, a partnership with no limits. Uh, and then we of, of course also know that uh, China is propping up Russia's economy. Uh, so uh, this is of course of concern and we need to be clear on these issues in our engagement with uh, China. The Economist. Anton LaGuardia of The Economist. Um, I was wondering whether you could be more precise in some of the wording that you use. You say that Ukraine's future is in the Euro-Atlantic family. Does that mean that NATO's future is in NATO and when? 
what does the um, multi-annual um, uh, program for Ukraine to help integrate it further mean? How is that different from what is being done today to help Ukraine defend itself? And last, on China, what do you actually mean by saying it's a big mistake with, um, uh, with uh, profound consequences if China were to provide lethal aid? What would, it, what would the consequences be? Thank you. Uh, first, on, <clears throat> on, uh, on NATO and Ukraine, NATO's position is that Ukraine will become a member of the alliance, and that position has not, not changed. Uh, but we know that uh, there are at least two things we need to address uh, to make that possible. Um, one is that we need to ensure that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent nation. Of course, any meaningful discussion about Ukraine as a member of the alliance uh, has to be based on that Ukraine is a democratic, independent nation in, uh, in Europe. And that's exactly what is now challenged uh, or threatened by the uh, uh, brutal Russian invasion. So the first step, the, the basic requirement, is to uh, provide uh, uh, military support uh, to Ukraine so, you, so President Putin doesn't win uh, uh, his war of uh, aggression. The second uh, uh, thing we need to address is that when this war ends and Ukraine prevails, um, then, of course, we need to ensure uh, that we have the highest level uh, of interoperability, that, 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 uh, uh, Russia, that, that, that Ukraine uh, is able to move from, uh, from Soviet-era standards, doctrines, uh, ways of operating uh, their armed forces. This transition has started, but we need more, and we need to, uh, to implement it quicker. And therefore, the difference between the current uh, support that NATO and NATO allies uh, is providing to Ukraine is that that's, that's, that's to meet the immediate needs. Uh, allies are providing, of course, uh, weapons, uh, uh, military support. Uh, NATO is also providing a lot of non-lethal support. But that's to address the immediate needs to help Ukraine now. Uh, this program is more long-term uh, perspective. That is about you know, building the institutions helping with the transition, the interoperability, the standards, the doctrines, all of these things that we need <clears throat> to have in place also to move towards uh, uh, membership. Uh, so that's, in a way, uh, the difference. Uh, then uh, the second question was China. Yeah. Well, uh, as a consequences, I, I think I will only limit myself to say that it has been make, made clear by several allies, also the biggest ally, uh, that there will be severe consequences. Uh, and I think there's no reason to go into details, but, but China knows that there will be severe consequences if they start to provide uh, lead aid to, um, to, uh, to, Ukraine, to, 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 to Russia. Sorry. Okay, we'll go to the um, Kiev Independent. Uh, how high do you assess is the likelihood that Belarus would become a direct participant of Russia's war against Ukraine? And what do you think would encourage the Lukashenko regime to make this move? And my second question is, how have the NATO allies given enough weapons for Ukraine to launch a counteroffensive in the nearest weeks? And uh, how many advanced Western tanks can Ukraine expect to receive from NATO allies till the end of the year? Thank you. Uh, well, the Allies are uh, delivering uh, 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 unprecedented uh, military support to Ukraine. We have also stepped up our support over the last uh, weeks and months, um, also with uh, uh, armoured vehicles, uh, battle tanks, but not only battle tanks, but also infantry fighting vehicles, uh, 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 armoured personnel carriers, and a lot of support, meaning, for instance, fuel trucks, uh, uh, heavy systems to... Uh, to, remind mine, to, to remove minefields and to enable uh, the Ukrainians to cross uh, all the, the uh, defense barriers that the Russians have uh, built up over the last uh, uh, months. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so this is not only about the, the battle tanks, but all the support they need to be able to function and to operate as they should, not only for a few days, but for weeks. And therefore, this is uh, also about... Uh, um, Sustainment, meaning uh, providing the fuel, the ammunition, the spare parts, the, the maintenance capacity that need to follow and support these, uh, these, uh, these efforts. Um, uh, there is, there is a <clears throat> in totality, there is a high number, I don't have the number in my head now, but in total, there is a high number of, uh, of battle tanks, 
some of them are older battle tanks, uh, some of them are Soviet era battle tanks, but many of them are also now modern NATO standard battle tanks. Uh, the UK has delivered uh, Challenger, uh, many NATO allies have delivered uh, Leopard 2, uh, uh, and then uh, the US is also now in the process of delivering uh, Abrams. This comes on top on, uh, of the, for instance, the Martyrs, which is uh, infantry fighting vehicles, uh, uh, the, the Bradleys, which is uh, US infantry fighting vehicles, and it is this totality that provides the Ukrainians with the capabilities they need uh, to retake land, uh, to, to, to further push back uh, uh, the, uh, the Russian, uh, Russian uh, also, uh, forces. Uh, it, it is for the Ukrainians to make the operational decisions on exactly how and when uh, our responsibility is to, uh, to help them. On Belarus, well, Belarus um, has been and continues to be a platform which Russia uses in its aggressive actions against, uh, uh, um, against uh, Ukraine. They launched uh, uh, the, uh, part of the invasion from, from, from Belarus and they have uh, launched several airstrikes from Belarus. Our message to Belarus is, of course, that they should not be directly involved, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, we will just continue uh, to provide uh, Ukraine with the uh, support they need to, uh, to fight against aggression uh, and, uh, and to win this uh, war. Okay, CDF. Thanks. Secretary General, I have a more general question on China. Uh, as uh, the view on China changed, are you ready to change or is NATO ready to change the strategic uh, concept towards China? No. Uh, the, the reality is that the strategic concept we uh, agreed in Madrid reflects uh, NATO's, uh, or should I say, a new uh, 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 recognition of uh, what China means for our security. Because I think we need to realize that NATO has come a long way when it comes to, uh, to, to China. In the strategic concept we had until last summer, China was not mentioned with a single word. Then uh, in the strategic concept we agreed in uh, Madrid in, uh, in, in, uh, in June last year, uh, we made important decisions. <clears throat> we don't regard China as an adversary, uh, but uh, we state clearly in the strategic concept that uh, uh, China's assertive behavior um, uh, poses a challenge uh, to our interests, our uh, values, to our security. And this is reflected in the fact that China is investing heavily in new modern capabilities, including long-range nuclear uh, missiles. Um, uh, they are cracking down on democratic rights in their own country, in Hong Kong, uh, prosecuting minorities, um, using social media, the internet, to. To, 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 to have surveillance of the population in a way we haven't seen uh, at that scale any time before. Um, um, the they assertive behavior in the South China Sea is a challenge for the countries in the region, but also a challenge to, uh, to international trade, uh, the threats against Taiwan. Um, and then, of course, the fact that China is coming closer to us. We see them in cyberspace. We see them trying to control a critical infrastructure. And all of this, and also then, of course, that they are now working more and more closely with Russia. Uh, we see uh, Russian-Chinese joint naval patrols, uh, uh, air patrols. We saw a big uh, military exercise outside the coast of Africa. And all of this together has actually uh, uh, made it necessary for us to, uh, to update and to develop our policies on, uh, on China. And that is reflected in the new strategic concept. It is also reflected in the fact that we are now significantly strengthening our partnership with our Indo-Pacific partners, uh, with Australia, with, uh, with New Zealand, Japan, and South Korea. They participated in the meeting uh, today. Uh, for the first time ever, we invited the heads of state and government to participate in our summit uh, last summer. And uh, I invited the heads of state and government from Japan, uh, New Zealand, uh, South Korea, and, uh, and Australia. Uh, also to attend our summit uh, uh, next summer, or this summer also in, in, uh, in Vilnius. So put together, uh, this is a huge effort, and let me just add, what we do on resilience on technology is also a way to respond to the challenges that uh, uh, China poses to our security. Okay, uh, Jon Hap. 
lady here. Yeah. No? No. Thanks. Uh, Bin Na Chong from Yonhap News Agency, South Korea. Um, Secretary General, you have urged Korea to increase its military support to Ukraine when you visited uh, Korea last January, and um, saying that some countries have changed their policy to send weapons directly to Ukraine after the war. And did you raise this among today's discussion as well? And I would like what was Korea's response if you had. And regarding, if I may ask another one, re regarding the NATO's non-lethal assistance package, which Japan has recently uh, pledged, did the uh, Vice Minister of Korea express his intention for a contribution as well today? Thanks. First of all, I think it's for uh, Korea to, 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 to provide exact answers uh, on their positions and what they do. What I, what I can say is that uh, we are, uh, uh, it was a big issue when I visited Korea in January, um, and I've uh, also raised it again, and I welcome the fact that uh, South Korea has made it clear that they are ramping up production, um, uh, and we need to understand that, uh, that it helps that South Korea is ramping up production uh, and delivering uh, also to NATO allies, because then we can replenish our own stocks. And South Korea is a big uh, producer of ammunition, um, and the, the fact that they are now uh, delivering more and producing more to replenish the stocks of NATO allies enable us to continue to deliver to, uh, to uh, U Ukraine. Um, so I will, uh, what should I say, uh, I will not go into uh, the issue of exactly how or to whom uh, South Korea should deliver. My main message is that by providing more uh, aid to uh, or not aid, but also supplies of ammunition to, uh, to NATO allies, then able us to uh, continue to support uh, uh, Ukraine, and, and I welcome the announcements made uh, from South Korea on that. Okay. Uh, Rai? Thank you. Uh, my question is about migrants. Uh, did you talk uh, with Italian Foreign Minister Tajani about uh, this problem. What can NATO do in that part of the Mediterranean? Thank you so much. Well, uh, in the meeting we had uh, today, uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, migration was a part of the discussion, especially when we addressed the challenges uh, emanating from the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, and of course what NATO does, and this is also something I've discussed uh, with uh, the Italian foreign minister, with the Italian uh, prime minister uh, several times, is, uh, is that we are helping to uh, support the efforts of uh, individual allies, but also uh, of the European Union. Uh, we have a NATO naval presence in the Aegean Sea to help to implement the agreement between Turkey and the uh, EU on uh, illegal migration. Uh, we are working with partners uh, in, the, in the Middle East and, uh, and North Africa. We have our presence, our training mission in Iraq to try to address the root causes. A stable Iraq, uh, a stable Middle East is of course important also to address the root causes of uh, the migrant challenges that Europe is uh, facing. And we are also stepping up our cooperation uh, and, uh, and, uh, and support to countries like Tunisia and, uh, and Mauritania. Um, and then, of course, we are exchanging information, we are helping each other as, as NATO allies. But, but the, the migrant and refugee issue is, of course, something that has to be addressed with many different tools. Uh, many of them are outside the NATO mandate, but some of them are, and we are working uh, with countries, Iraq, Mauritania, uh, and others, to help to address the root causes. Okay, Bloomberg. Natalia Drozdjak from Bloomberg. Thank you for the question. I'm wondering whether NATO still believes that China holds sway over Russia uh, with, with regards to the war in Ukraine, especially after Russia announced plans to station nuclear weapons in Belarus days after it had signed a declaration with China saying countries shouldn't station weapons abroad. Thank you. So what we know is that uh, Russia is more and more dependent on China. Uh, uh, trade with China uh, 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 has become even more important for uh, Russia, uh, uh, not least because of the economic san sanctions and, and the consequences of the war uh, in Ukraine. I also believe that uh, 
uh, the announcement that they will deploy tactical uh, weapons, nuclear weapons, to, uh, to Belarus just after they signed an agreement uh, stating the opposite, just shows that th these are empty promises. Uh, and uh, we, what we need to, uh, to watch closely is actually what Russia is doing. Uh, and, um, and that's exactly what NATO allies uh, are uh, monitoring closely. So far, we haven't seen any changes in the uh, Russian nuclear posture that requires any changes in our posture, but we remain vigilant. We will follow closely what they do. And uh, we have increased our presence in the eastern part of the alliance uh, to, to uh, remove any room for misunderstanding, miscalculation in Moscow about NATO's readiness uh, to protect and defend all allies. And we do that not to provoke a conflict, but to prevent the conflict, to, 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 to prevent any uh, military attack on NATO allies. Okay, we'll take one last question from Politico. Um, thank you very much, Ali, from Politico. Um, Secretary General, did ministers discuss the arrest and continued detention of Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich, and did they discuss any concrete steps or actions that they can take to help secure his immediate release? Thank you. Well, my uh, uh, message uh, is that uh, the uh, Wall Street Journal, journal uh, journalist should be released uh, and uh, and uh, this is about freedom uh, of, uh, of the press uh, and uh, the importance of journalists to be able to operate and to ask difficult questions and to do their work. Uh, and many other allies have expected, uh, has expressed exactly the same uh, call on, uh, on Russia. Thank you very much, colleagues. This concludes this press conference. Thank you. Thank you.